Hi, guys. Welcome to the Fairview Race Meeting. We're on the poly, and we've got Daryl Marie and Darren Burrows with me. I'm going to talk to them about this card so we get some action out of the first race. I'll go to Darren Burrows first. It is the start of the bipod. Darren, uh, I see Gavin Smith again, obviously. Nothing unusual. Gavin Smith and Alan Greer, the two of them dominating. Which one for you? Clyde, for me, definitely the horse to beat is Enchanted Sky. Now, she's out of Enchantress, who was an out-and-out -out sprinter, and I just get the feeling that drop back to 1,000 metres for the first time. Um, this filly is going to be very hard to beat. So I'm going to be bankering Enchanted Sky in the first race. Okay, so Enchanted Sky, we start our Tuesday with Enchanted Sky. That sounds good. Mr. Marie, are you in agreement? Snap. <laughs> um, yeah, Clyde, uh, Enchantress was a high-class sprinting filly. I think she won eight or nine races over the minimum trip. Um, uh, she gets her tongue tied for the first time. Uh, she's in cracking form, and I certainly have a preference for her over her biggest danger, number four. Um, you know, the filly trained by Alan Kreev, when she gets to the front, Clyde, she tends to run around a bit, so that is... A uh, major concern for me. So I'm happy to bank a number one Enchanted Sky. Okay, so we've got Enchanted Sky, home and hose, Joe, hopefully, without speaking too soon. Let's take a look. So Darren Burrows will put that up for you in writing. He confirms Enchanted Sky in race one. We're going to start with that. I think it's 11 to 10 the last time I had a look. Remember, we're doing this on Monday. So, yeah, 11 to 10 thereabouts. So probably going to be shorter. I don't know how it's going to go. And then uh, Daryl Marie's worked out a bipod for us. Let's have a look at the Daryl Marie bipod. Seems fairly straightforward, although hopefully anyway. First leg, banker one by banker two by one and eight. By one, four and five. By four, five and, and eight. And the last leg, three, four, six and seven. That's the latest for the bipod out at Fairview. On to the second race now, and this is uh, where Candace Bass Robinson's going to come to life, hopefully, anyway, Darren Burrows, the one runner for the day. Easy to back, I see, at 18 to 10. You like it? Todd, I fancy this fully very strongly. Uh, now, last time out, uh, drawn deep at uh, Kenilworth, she moved up strongly at the 300, and I thought she was going to challenge the leaders, and then a couple uh, were just too good on the day. Um, she's running off Passchendaele, Fatal Gem. Um, if she brings any of that form to PE, she's going to win. So from a one draw, if she takes to the poly, I think she's going to smash them. Okay. Well, it does uh, on form look like the right horse, Mr. Marie. Uh, we're going to bank that in our player. What are we doing? Absolutely, Clyde. Um, I was very impressed with her later start. She actually quickened up like the winner in the center of the track and um she showed a decent turn of foot on that occasion so i think the poly track won't be an issue she's got a great draw for a change uh, so she can get into a prominent position uh yeah and that western cape maiden form should prove too strong once again so i'm happy to bank her in all bets i and i actually suggest a winning bet on her too if she's going to fluff her lines i think there's the only one danger in Rosa Rossa, number nine, but I believe she's more of a stain filly in time to come. Her damn one over a mile and a half. So watch this filly when she goes 2,000 plus. She'll certainly win her races, but today being a mile on the poly track surface, I'm certainly in number two's favor and camp of year. Okay. Flamboyant okay. flyer. Thank you for that. Tell me now, Betwave topped up Cameron's account. Uh, he's got a nice voucher there. Can you put the money on the source, uh, Daryl? Yep, and he can make a deposit and put some more. There you go. There you go, Cameron. If you're listening, there we are. Right, let's have a look at selections from Ricky. He'll put that up for us now. He shows that flamboyant flyer from Darren Burrow's perspective is the horse to beat. So we're going to go with that on his side. And then obviously, Daryl Marie's worked out. I think he's worked out a place accumulator, has he, for us? We'll have a look now and see what he's got. Yes, he has. He's bankering this one over here with horses all the way through to the end. And there's um, the cost of what this place accumulator is worth on this Tuesday afternoon.
Right, let's get into the action now. The third race, the start of today's pick six as well. And this horse from Gavin Smith's stable looks the right one. Eight to ten, reach for the stars. Darren, hard to beat. Very hard to beat, Clyde. Um, I mean, you can't really look past him in this type of company. You know, he's run a final edition um, in his local debut. He was beaten half a length in his second start in PE. He's going to get the run of the race. He likes to race handy with the pace. He's drawn one. Um, everything in his favour, and I can't see this field matching him. Okay, so there's a lot of confidence from the Barrow's corner. Mr. Marie, on your side? Clyde, I'll certainly give him a winning chance. Um, the only thing is, it is an open maiden, which means that it's a handicap and he's having to give weight all around. Uh, but I thought he was beaten by a great ride by Richard Free last time out on the eventual winner. Um, yeah, since he's arrived in the new province, he's uh, put in two solid efforts. So I'll give him a strong winning chance. He does hold his biggest rival or market rival. That's number three. Give us a smile. Um, who could be better than that effort, but he holds him quite convincingly. So it's hard to see him reverse the form. And then if you are looking for a bit of a sneaker in the pack, Clyde, because like I touched on, it is a handicap. Have a look at number eight of here. Piper of Hamlin. Now, his form is admittedly um, moderate to date, but he's been rested and gelded, Clyde, and he's only got 52 kilograms to shoulder. So I'm expecting major improvement from, eight, from number eight, Piper of Hamlin, but I certainly make the favorite reach for the stars the one to beat okay piper of hamlin could be a nice exact horse if the rank outside in the race at 25 to 1. thanks there daryl <clears throat> let's have a look at the selections in from the guys and take a look at what we've got here we've got to reach for the stars from darren burrows they're going for that and uh, that it does appear to be the right horse and quite hard to beat On to race number four. I think this is now where it starts to get a little more tricky than the first half of the card, Darren Burrows. You can tell us a bit more about the race. What do you like? Uh, Clyde, very tricky. Um, you've got recent maiden winners like Final Edition and Hawk Circle that both won their maidens very comfortably, and there is a chance they can follow up. Um, you've got Africa's Rock. He's got the ability. Um, he's slowly getting consistency back. I think he'll be involved in the finish. Uh, Vaz Verta, Samanga Kamala for Gavin Smith. You can never ignore that combination. And there are others with small chances. Yeah, it does appear to be that kind of race. Daryl, you got any, like a Shruti in here or anything that you may fancy? A uh, very difficult lineup, Clyde. Um, I agree with Darren. Horses like Final and Edition and Hawks so are circle they're going to win their races in the eastern cape they're nice sorts uh final edition when he won last time I richard free said this horse overdid it and he'll be much better coming back in distance so i think from a two draw over a mile um he's certainly in here with a big big shot hawk circle absolutely trotted up last time out it was on the turf but in his penultimate start for his first run for the new yard, I mean, he just got touched off in the latter stages but behind Mohanda. So he's going he's gonna to progress. Like I say, he's going to be a decent handicapper. But Vas Voter on his last start, Clyde, that was a super, super impressive effort in the Guineas. I'll tell you why. The winner, Fairy Knights, is rated 93. And he was rated 72. That's a 21 pound or 10 and a half kilogram uh, difference. He, he was only in receipt of two kilograms. So he was out eight and a half kilograms with Fairy Knight. And he was only beaten four lengths. So if he re reproduces that effort, I think uh, he will go close. But he's taken on two nice sorts in Walk Circle and Final Edition. So I've just opted to go the safe route, numbers one, four, and five. Okay, thank you very much for that. So we've got that information for this race. Four, let's put some of the information up then from our perspective, from weighted to win. 
Daryl Marie's worked out the jackpot for you in this particular event. And as far as the jackpot goes, it's one, four, and five in the first leg. By four, five, and eight. By three, four, six, and seven. By one, three, four, seven, and nine. Let's get on to race number five now. We talk about this particular event. They bet seven to two the field. Just before I get to this race, I want to ask Darren Burrows and Daryl Marie their view on. Give me another who won super impressively on Sunday. She must be one of the best in the country, what I saw on Sunday, Mr. Burrows. Yes, Clyde. Um, you know, before uh, she actually ran on Saturday, I said this is one of the better fillies in the country. She's probably better than her damn Nada Russia. Um, I still couldn't compare her to her granddam uh, mother, Russia, because she was a multiple grade one winner, including the Queen's Plate. But she's heading in the right direction, and I believe she's a serious, serious filly in the making. Now, let's touch on this race. I thought it was a field race, but I did suggest a place bet on soft touch. Now, she's absolutely tumbled in the ratings. She's finding a better form lately. Seven lengths back, five lengths back, three lengths back. And if she can build on that last effort at a massive price, I think soft touch could be the small each way play. Okay, soft touch the play here. We'll consider that and certainly put it into all of our um, exotics, etc. And maybe even consider the each way as you've recommended. Daryl Marina, I'll ask you your impressions of Gimme Another. Well, whoever's not super impressed, Clyde, um, hasn't been watching her win. Uh, it just looks like she drops, she gets low down to the ground and, and finds extra gears. I mean, for her to have won like that against a high-class filly in Feather Bow, uh, I mean, you, it was a sensational win. I can't wait to see how she goes, uh, progresses in her career. Yeah, very exciting, Clyde. Firstly, a form update for number four, State of Mind. She ran second behind United Express. Uh, that was a great ride by Richard Free on United Express. And this mare, Clyde, has attempted the course and distance twice before. And she's finished third and fourth, or second and third, I, I think. So, you know, Jacques Stratum with fillies and mares of this caliber, um, I mean, they, they run in super consistently. So I actually give her a chance of here. Number five, St. Clou. Uh, disappointing effort last time out. Uh, maybe it was the distance. Um, penultimate effort against the boys. If she can reproduce something similar to that, she'll be right there at the finish. And then have a look at number eight, trip to Barberton. There's a few equipment changes here. The cheek pieces go back on. A tongue tie gets fitted for the, for the first time in the province. And she cracks a draw, Clyde. She's had difficult draws to contend with in the past. So if I'm going to be leaning towards one, possibly number eight of you, trip to Barberton. Okay, sorry about that. I hesitated there just for a moment. Yeah, trip to Barberton. Okay, so we're going to put that into the play. Thank you very much. Darren's got a shrewdy, and so does Daryl. Maybe we can put the two together. Basically, soft touch and trip to Barberton, maybe a double floater or something like that in a quartet. Right, that's race number five uh, from Fairview. Thank you very much. Let's hope uh, we can get some action. Reminder that it is also a jackpot opportunity that you guys may want to work out as well.